Hello and welcome back to the TNC podcast. I think this is the first ever podcast we've recorded straight after a game. My throat is slightly croaky. We have just witnessed Norwich City beat Newcastle United 3-1. That's not Woodford's. No, unfortunately uh, Woodford's couldn't get us our next free batch of Woodford's. So um, I went to the um, we I went to the Woodford's brand. beer engine today. Mm. So good. Absolute result. It was like a, another German at Cow Road, of course. Exactly. It reminded me of Grant Hanley extinguishing any problems that we had at the back. Grant Hanley today, by the way, the Norfolk PK. By the way, should we address the hats first of all? Yes, let's do that. So a big thank you to it was Elliot Waterfield, our good friend Elliot Waterfield, yes. friend of TNC. He said to us, um, well, no, he didn't even say to us. He didn't give us an option. He brought us back two genuine yeah. icon caps from Turkey. Uh, and of course, the icon cap is made famous by Dennis Shrebeni. Dennis Shrebeni, we all know, is one of the Premier League's finest footballers. Uh, so we thought we'd wear them. Well, the tweet, we put the tweet out, of course, didn't we, Jack? Which was which I massively under-egged, which was just retweet this 30 times and we'll wear the uh, the icon caps. And I think it got to like 100 90, retweets, didn't it? got it? to 30 retweets in 90 seconds. That was what, three... A so, week every three seconds. We've got to keep these on for the whole duration yeah, of this it's podcast. It's really hot as well. If you're listening to this on Spotify and SoundCloud, unfortunately, you won't be able to see our pain. But if you'd like to, you could watch this on YouTube yeah, as well. I'd, this is one of the few weeks I'd recommend us recommend. If you're in the car, wait until you maybe maybe pull over in the lay-by if you're, if you're listening now. Yes. Just to, and go onto YouTube and, and look at the icon caps. Anyway, let's go back. How are you, first of all? I'm phenomenal. We've literally just played Newcastle off the park at Carrow Road and I'm buzzing. Mm. How are you? Good. Um, Only good? Yeah, no, really, really good. Um, really, really great? Really, really great. The, the birds are... Um, doves are crying. Doves are crying. Sun is it. shining. You were at Centre Parks for the Liverpool game. Yes. How was that? Let's go back to the start of the season because we yeah. haven't spoke since then. Um, so, um, I thought that the Liverpool performance was actually really decent. I thought we put in um, a, a really good a really good effort, particularly the second half. I thought that we, we were outstanding against... I mean, Liverpool and Man City are in another league, 100%. Yeah. There's, no one will touch them this season. So for Norwich City to, to put on that sort of display against one of the two best teams in Europe, arguably. Um, well, the best team in Europe. Well, the, the best team in Europe, um, definitely. Um, England, maybe one of two. Um, so yeah, that was exciting. I was in Centre Parks watching it. The whole bar was full of glory hunting right. Liverpool fans. And they were giving it large, like, you know... Oh, I can't even begin to tell you was how it annoying off it was. Was it kicking off at Centre Park? It was kicking off. Right. And I was getting more and more annoyed mm. that all of the, you could hear that they were from Thetford. Right. They were not from Liverpool. There wasn't a single Scouse accent in the room. Thetford, I suppose, is, you know, closer yeah. to Liverpool than, yeah, than Norwich. But it's like all of the people from Yarmouth that support Manchester United. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, so when Team Ipuki finished against Liverpool, um, I proceeded to do a cartwheel in front of a massive you big screen. a cartwheel? Um, well, it was like a cartwheel forward roll. It was like a bit of, bit wow. of, bit of both. Really put on a what, show. You can genuinely do a cartwheel. And the Liverpool fans were livid. Right. And I was thinking to myself, you're four, you're four and up. Yeah. Anyway, brilliant. I actually thought we, I genuinely thought we held our own. Well, did you come half. away from that game happy? I came away from that game feeling proud. And right. that was what I said to you that I wanted to feel. I think that it's the first time ever in the history of supporting Norwich City. I'm sure a lot of people would agree with this where we've lost 4-1 and felt genuinely yeah. proud of the boys. I mean, I'm not going to back Hanley up. He had an absolute howler. But apart from that, I thought that we looked pretty strong. Now, that game finishes. We're all fairly upbeat. Most people saying, there are a few pundits, uh, I think Ian Abraham's included, um, saying we were, you know, what do we expect when you go to Anfield and play that way? And we were all saying, well, if we continue to create chances, which we did at Liverpool, we will beat certain teams this season. Today, which is the Saturday when we're recording, presented the perfect opportunity. It was Newcastle at home. They've let go of Rafael Benitez. They've brought in yeah. uh, legend Steve Bruce, by the way. Norwich City legend. Um, much respect to Steve Bruce and, and even more so after today. Big up, Brucey. Um, and this presented the opportunity. However, there was a great expectation, wasn't there? And, and the injury um, mm. list going into the game on a Hernandez falling down the stairs. Yeah. Um, what is that all about, yeah, by the way? I mean, that, that is not good, is it? And Al, if you're watching or listening... Jeez. I mean, he hasn't had a good week yet. His Instagram hacked. Yeah. He's fallen down the stairs. Have Argos run out of stock of something? Is that the reason why? Argos, are you to blame for an L falling down the stairs, perhaps? Who but, knows? Uh, we didn't miss him against Newcastle. No, and, and, you know, 
bit having nine players injured. Is that how many we've had? Nine players wow. injured before this game. That single fact makes that performance against Newcastle probably one of the best performances I've ever seen Norwich play wow. at Carrow Road, ever. That's bold. Mate, we had nine players injured and mm. we played Premier League Newcastle off the park. Mm. Possession, more shots, dominated play both first half, second half. We were, we were chilled. I'd be really interested, producer Jen in the background, um, if we could get the passes between Norwich and Newcastle because it felt like we were just, we were teasing them. It mm. was like we were, yeah. If we wanted to go through another gear, we could go through another gear. Yeah. If we didn't, we yeah. didn't have to. It felt so comfortable. Yeah, it did. And actually, you know, I'll take this away from Norwich City, actually, and I would say that from, from a Newcastle fan's point of view, I would be extremely worried. Right. I thought we were excellent today, but equally I did think Newcastle were poor. They lacked an identity. They lacked anything going forward. Joe Linton for 40 million. Obviously, yeah. you'd rather team in Pookie. But is that, not, is that not the fantastic work of Ben Godfrey and Grant Hanley to keep him out of the game? I think Ben Godfrey was absolutely... Ben Godfrey was an animal today. Mm. Absolute animal. Won everything. Ridiculously good. Um, and, and you know what? It, and you can criticise Grant Hanley all you like for his mistake against Liverpool. he was good today. But you know what? It, it, it's very much what he gives to Ben in terms of leadership. Grant Hanley has been a massive person in terms of Ben Godfrey's upbringing mm. at Norwich City what he's managed to do last season this season you know giving him that arm around the shoulders I think has been super important that's rubbed off on Ben 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 was awesome today I think I think for me obviously Team Puki man the match no doubt about that yeah. Todd Cantwell we'll go back to him wow I mean Todd wow Cantwell, uh, wow <laughs> dyed his hair as well oh and he's and it and it stinks of success right Jenna, uh, be interested. I think Todd Cantwell probably played the majority of these passes. How many passes? What do you think? What do we think? Wow. I think how many? How many passes does an average football game? We have? played full stop today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say five hundred. And Newcastle? Two hundred and fifty. So Norwich six hundred and forty. Newcastle three hundred and fifty-five, nearly double. Wow. Wow. Nice. Mm -hmm. I mean that that to me, all joking apart. Well, that's possible. It reminds me of the, you know, the heydays of Barcelona. Lionel Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, <laughs> keeping the ball, dominating play. No, 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 you laugh. And people laugh listening to this now. But did you not feel like today we played with the same sort of prowess that Barcelona played with? Jack, I'm not having a bubble bath. I know I'm wearing an icon cap. And I know that I'm half a beer in. But I'm telling you now, you know what? You know what made me think this looks like Barcelona? Moritz Leitner's oh, I was saying, body language, mm, body language, right. not the way he played, just the way he was just, just you know, vibing across <laughs> the midfield. Genuinely, honestly, I can't stop praising the boys today. I, I was almost a bit in shock. I almost passed out actually. No, you did. When Team Ibuki scored, I tell you what, as you know, I was, I was giving Team a hard time for missing that first, that first yeah, chance. You were. Seven minutes in, absolute sitter misses it wide. How dare I? He scores that belter, mm. and I almost passed out. Yeah, you were loving it. You were like two rows forwards again. Yeah, I mean it was it was, it was a great moment. Morris Leitner, though, I, I think I'm, I'm glad you raised that point because I think he was the missing link at Liverpool. I don't think Kenny McLean was poor at Liverpool, but he went missing. Agreed. Kenny McLean didn't go missing last season, and that step up through the through the through the league is tough. But when Morris Leitner came on against Liverpool at Anfield, he yeah. changed the game, and it just felt if we had that kind of metronomic figure in the middle of the park like Moritz Leitner, mm. we were going to do good things. And he just controlled the game. And let's talk about Tommy Tribal, who never gives oh, the ball away in behind him. What a performance from him as he well. He was monumental. You you were praising him more than me for once, which no, is well, a change. I just thought he was he was the he was the foundation. All good yeah. all good projects yeah. need good foundations. And, right? in, and, in, and in any other game, Tom Tribal would have been man of the match. Mm. But there was probably six, seven, eight man of the matches today. Yeah. I, I, honestly, Tom was fifty out of ten. Like he was ridiculous. So let's talk, let's talk about this this partnership that some are comparing to the two thousand and nine Stephen Gerrard Fernando Torres partnership of Todd Cantwell. And Timu Puki. Timu Puki, before for recording, was the Premier League's top goal scorer. Raheem Sterling then went on to score. I'm not sure if he's scored many. I think he's joined At the end now. of the day, though, this is a man who's now scored two goals a game in the Premier League. He was on a free transfer. Timu Puki is tearing the Premier League up. 
he's just so so bloody clinical mm. and how many times Jack were we saying last time we were in the Premier League bless his heart Cam Jam Cam and Jerome worked hard but I can work hard though, he Chris. needed you can work hard Jack <laughs> But Cam Jam needed 10, 11, 12 chances a game to bury mm. one or two, right? With Timu, he can be quiet, mm. creating spaces for other for others. The most selfless Norwich City player I have ever, ever seen in yellow. The way that he's just so chilled and creating space for others. But all he needs is one, and he buries mm. it. Today, he showed that. First half, yeah, all right, we, we, we should have... I think we should have buried some, for sure. But we were just but wearing the second down. half, in the second half, we didn't have that much and Timu finished it time after time. And, and I think the third goal was the perfect example of the way Todd Cantwell has, has, has grown into the shirt because mm -hmm. that run in behind the defence, the little layoff to yeah. Timu and the clinical finish, this is turning out to be quite a, a potent duo. Look, it, it's early days. It is early days. I think... You yeah, but get excited, Chris. Oh, absolutely. But let, let's, let's remember it is early days for, for the Todd... Timu combo, right? But we can but only go off what we've seen this season. Absolutely. Yeah. I sitting here now, however many minutes it is after the game, I feel like a proud father watching Todd Cantwell. I feel, I, honestly, I watched him today, and and I was almost welling up a little bit, G genuinely, because just his confidence. And you know what? I'm going to say it. He sat here for the podcast, and you got this vibe of the fact that yes. He was confident, mm. but at the same time he was thinking, I'm not sure where I fit into the Premier League Norwich City. That's right. the vibe I got anyway. I'm not sure if everyone else got that vibe either. But over the summer, I noticed one thing. Todd Cantwell was working harder than any other Norwich City player outside of the pre-season training. Every day, relentless. Bam. Training, 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 training. Bogged and up a bit as well. Bogged up a bit as well. You know, let us know in the comments below if you've noticed a difference in Todd in terms of you know, but genuinely, he has bowled up. Yeah, hasn't no, he? he has. He looks stronger on the ball, and that's made a massive difference. We we saw that with Madison. You know, we we saw that with Josh and Jacob Murphy as well. When they've bulked up, it's added so much more to their game. I feel so bloody proud watching Todd today. I was speaking to someone in in the office in the week, and they said, um, big Liverpool fan, and and they said they watched Todd Cantwell, and they also watched him a lot last season. And the big thing he noticed was the way in which he moved his body around the ball and yes. protected the ball. Yes. There was a lot of times last season where he lost the ball in possession, and that cost us. But this season, if a player gets in the way, he'll draw a foul. If a player gets in the way, he'll find a way out. We saw it so much today, and do, that's just so pleasing. Do you think Todd Cantwell could possibly take Marco Stiefman's position? I th yeah, I, I can see Jen nodding in the background, and and I was really intrigued to see that you hadn't put um, you hadn't put Patrick Roberts in your side in in our, in our predicted 11s that went out on Twitter in the week on on the Talk Norwich City account. For me, Stiefman is is a good footballer. Mm. He's not a Premier League footballer. Wow, big statement. No, it is. Well, he is. He is. Well, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. All right, he is. Um, he's not a player that will perform in the Premier League. That's what I'm saying. I think it's Chris, harsh. Did you watch Patrick Roberts pre-season? Yes. Is he better than Marco Stiefman in for the pre, for a Premier League game? Way too early to call it. Patrick Were you Rob happy with Marco Stiefman's performance today? Because I heard you bellowing at him in the ground. I was disappointed that there are a few very better. But but the thing with Mar the thing with Marco is one moment he could be an absolute wizard, and the other moment he's giving away a really basic six-yard pass. But for me, I think that's I think that's li a little too harsh on Marco. All I'm suggesting is, I personally, if I was the gaffer, I would be putting Cantwell over Marco Stiefman now. So who else comes in? Depending on the game. But today it was more physical. So having Marco in there yeah, worked. Yeah, yeah. And it only got to the 60, 70 minute mark where I said to you, Jack, no, you know what? That's another pass missed from Marco. I'm now taking him off. Yeah. I think it's going to be really intriguing to see if we can fit in Buendia, Roberts, and also count one in behind that striker. You might be right. It might be that physicality that Farker really likes yeah. in Stieperman. Yeah. And I think that's a very valuable asset to have. I just think that that final product, that final pass, that final shot, he got a fantastic shooting opportunity today. We saw it at Liverpool as mm, well. Big, big I'm chance, not seeing yeah. the clinicalness that a it's team so is early, It is early, yes it is. It's so early and we wrote him off last season. Let's, let's not write him off this early on. I mean, the one perhaps unorthodox opinion watching that Newcastle game is, I looked at Emmy Buendia today and I thought potentially he was a wee bit off colour. Right. I have to say, I didn't, I didn't look at him and go, wow, today, for the first time in a while. 
Um, I don't know if it's fitness. I don't know if it's the fact that just everyone else was just ridiculously good. Yeah. Um, there was just a few moments today where I thought Emmy could have been a bit better. I yeah. think there were moments of brilliance in, in tight gaps, though, especially in our yeah. own half when we were under, yeah. under pressure and he could he could move so well. Um, a player I'm, I'm really chuffed to say, I've, I've changed my opinion on slightly, is Tim Krull. I said in my video... Um, wow. I said in my video titled Why Tim Krull Should Be Dropped three weeks ago. By the I way, said you, he should you're start a naughty boy for that. <laughs> that. You're a naughty boy. Can I just say, I take no responsibility for that clickbait <laughs> title. I said he should start the season, but I predicted that four games in, he'd be dropped for Ralph Fairman. Um, and granted, we're not four games in yet, so that still could happen. But there was a certain authority about him today that I didn't see last season. It's always been an no, I don't think there has been. I don't think there has wrong. been. Quite as we've seen wrong. this season. You are wrong. He showed he's taken... leadership skills last season all no, season. No, 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 no. That's the no, best no. part of Tim Krull's game. He showed leadership skills in terms of organising a defence, but yeah. authority over his own performance, claiming balls from crosses, mm. making big saves. What I would say is today there was an added factor of this is my old club. Right. So I want to prove a point. I would say that, definitely. I think that Tim Krull did go up on another gear today. I loved seeing Tim Krull's face at the end, turn to the mm. Barkley, just the facial yeah. expression was just like, that meant a lot to me. I love Tim Krull. I really do. You know, I'm not claiming he's the best goalkeeper ever, no. to ever, you know, wear the Norwich shirt, but he buys into to the philosophy. He's fantastic um, in terms of the, the short-term distribution mm. to, 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 you know, push us forward. Yeah, yeah. And, and the way that he directs Ben yeah. and the young boys at the back is brilliant. He's the perfect keeper to have with our back line. You know what? New year, new me. Well, new season, new me. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm in Tim Krull's camp. You know, I've, wow. You know, I've pitched my tent up there as well. Jeez. Yeah. I, I'm not sure you're welcome anymore. Well, maybe I'm not, but I'll, I'll, I'll pitch up outside and, and look in yeah. and say, I wish I was in there. You've got a lot to make up for with Tim Krull. You know, I'm, you. Tim, I'll, I'll look down the lens and, I, and I'll say sorry for, for what I've said. Although he, he was fairly complimentary of us when we saw him at Russ versus Wes game. I think he likes what we gave him last season. Well. I think it kicks him on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't you dare say us. You. <laughs> anyway, you I, was, I was going off solely off stats and Ralph Fairman, according to stats, is, is still the far superior keeper. Um, Max Aaron's Jamal Lewis... Yeah. Also fantastic. You know what? Jamal Lewis today was unbelievable. Mm. Unbelievable. And I honestly, and I'm, I'll be totally transparent here, the one worry for me this season was Max and Jamal in the championship tore it apart. Yeah. But I think there was a sense of the fact that it was com there was a comfort blanket for the fact it was the championship. Right. This is now the big, scary Premier League, and mm. you've got Aguero running at you, Salah running at you, and you saw Jamal dispossess Salah in the, in the mm. Liverpool game and I gave a big massive come on in, 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 in the bar full of glory hunting Liverpool fans did you do a cartwheel for that? no I didn't right. but again today Jamal Lewis I love the fact he's not afraid to bomb on and it's been far too long since I've seen a Norwich and I tell you this is going to sound super weird the only good thing about John Obsemable, there's a name for you, John Obsemable, was the fact that he bombed on is he coming on the pod? and I love the fact by the way I should invite him good idea Jamal Lewis isn't afraid to bomb on. He's not afraid to... to so you've just compared Jamal Lewis in international football no, to John Obsemable? No way, no way. I'm just saying, part, I've not seen a defender have that strength in that area since John Obsemable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I've only had one day, I promise. How big was that win today? Because I was genuinely... Liverpool, I wasn't nervous. It was a free hit. As Stuart Webber said, 33, 38 free hits this yeah. season. Today I was nervous because I thought, right. the, yeah, I was because the world was watching. We can all say we play nice football, but if you don't beat the Newcastles of the league, then you've got no leg to stand on. I think that's disrespectful to Newcastle. I don't. I absolutely do. Let's not forget the amount. One of, of the favourites for, for relegation. The amount of money. That Their Newcastle fans know they're down. Wow, that's a big statement. They do. I was listening to Five Live. The anyway, three fans anyway, I heard. What, what's your it's question? Good. I've lost your question now. It's a bit. It was a big win. Yeah, it was. It felt actually like a relief. It felt like you know the, the monkey's off our back now, big time in terms of in terms of getting those first three points on the board. Love the fact that Daniel Farker said in his press conference, "I want points," and he got points today. Mm. And what but do points make? Prizes. Exactly. Points mean prizes. Mm. And points means pookie <laughs> party as well. Yeah. Normally. Good. Slightly disappointed not to see Dennis Shrebeni feature today. Very disappointed not to see Big D The featured. big man. Uh, anyway, 
We will be going to the Talk Norwich City questions. Thanks yes. to everybody who tweeted in, as always. The bit... Timmy Pick is trending on Twitter. Is he? Yeah. Is he actually? Yeah. Not nationally? I think or locally? So. I don't know. It's just it's spooky. Fine. Love that. Anyway, TNC. Let's go there. Um, just but, fill some, some dead air. Okay. Um, what I would say from today's performance is I want to hear what you guys thought in terms of your top three. Your top three players. Not your man match, your top three. Really interested, actually, because there were so many. Yeah. Let us know in the YouTube comments. If you're listening on Spotify, SoundCloud, tweet the Talk Norwich City account and let us know your top three man of the match. Or your top three moments of the day. Oh, I love that. I love, that's even better. In fact, do both. One of my favourite moments was... Um, what was your favourite moment? We're seeing Manson. Mystic. Over the horizon. Oh. Yeah. The guy just stinks of class. Yeah. It's I love, I love him. He's wearing socks as well today. Was he kind of wool? He was wearing socks. I think he was, yeah. Jesus. Massive question. And producer Jen has also tweeted back to say massive question. William Parry asks, what do you make Hi, of William. singing Farkas on a horse without roads? We've got Lightner, Buendia and Cruel. So we're changing the name. I'm going Cruel. I heard, changing the name. I heard someone say close. And I thought that worked. We've got Lightner, Buendia and Cruel. Now let's do Cruel. We've got Lightner, Buendia and Cruel. No, it's Cruel. It's Cruel for me all day long. Right. I was in Cruel. You're in the Cruel camp now, remember? Yeah, you know, you know I've pitched up. Might be a, might be a camper van next week. Um, Who knows? Incredibly disappointed not to, not to hear my um, Eddie Grant Electric Avenue. <laughs> oh, you, I love the fact that you belted that out on your own, though. Look, why is no one joining in on that? Mate, we play a quick days. one, two, liner to Amadou, and Pookie is on fire. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. Grant, maybe when Amadou makes his debut. Amadou, do, do. What's the next bit? I, I literally don't know. But I love the start of that song anyway. Uh, we've got an, we've got an apology to make. Jesus. Uh, this is to Peaky, who we saw at halftime oh, today. So I uh, tweeted. In the week that one of my favourite ever stand-in performances was Stephen Whittaker playing central midfield against Brentford. <laughs> favourite being your least favourite, obviously. Yeah, um, I said it was Alex Neal's first home game. It wasn't. Uh, Cardiff three-two was the first ever home game. So thanks to Peaky for pointing. That did you? Did out. sorry? Did I just miss? Did you say sorry? Yeah. Look, it's, it's a new it's a new season. We're always up for apologising if we've got something. The wrong. The bridges we've burned, we need to rebuild. And you've burnt you've you've burnt one with Tim Krull. Yeah, but I'm willing to I'm willing to rebuild it. Like like the Seven Bridge, I'll pay my toll to get over it. Nice, and you will. I'll make you. Yeah. Um, oh, now this is big. This is from Matt Gregory, our, our good friend Matt Gregory. Oh, thanks, Matt. How much is needed to sponsor Dennis Shrebeni? Can we have a TNC <laughs> whip round? Now, Chris made it. I think it was Maxi actually, wasn't it? Yeah, Maxi pointed it out. So Maxi pointed out to Chris. Our so videographer, by the way, for anyone that doesn't in know the program. All of the players, and by the way, staff, Zoe Ward's got a sponsor. Love that. Love that. Um, I'm sponsoring Zoe. Are you? I'm up for it. She's already sponsored. Oh, I thought... Oh. No, no, she's got a sponsor. Oh, I thought you said she didn't have a sponsor. No, no, no. Oh, okay. she's got one. Shame. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's funny about that? What is funny about that? <laughs> I said no. What, what's wrong anyway, with Zoe Ward being sponsored? No, it's brilliant. It is. Dennis Shrebeni hasn't been sponsored. So each player in the Norwich City squad has... <laughs> A company that sponsors them, right? And for that sponsorship, you get your name and your program. I think you get a dinner with the player, and you get a signed shirt. Thank us now, the commercial department. We all know that Dennis Shrebeni's our favourite player here at TNC. Absolutely, corking performance at Cardiff last year, and is still living <laughs> off that performance. <laughs> <laughs> Scored twice. On a serious note, he is our favourite player at Talk Norwich City. Anyway, Dennis Shrebeni doesn't have a sponsor, which for me is. Outrage. I'm actually really disappointed I'm in the dis- Norwich fans. I'm disgusted. You know, we big up the Norfolk business scene hugely. Yeah. I think this is disgraceful. Yeah, me too. Absolutely, 100%. Why is the icon not being sponsored? So, we want to be the change in the world that we want to see. Be the change you want to see. Yeah, like that. That's a quote, isn't it? Yeah, be the change you want to see is yeah. the quote. Yeah, nice. Keep going. So, we're going to sponsor Dennis Trebeni. Now, how we make this happen, we don't know. I think it's about three grand. Okay, we will make this happen though. So We're gonna try our hardest. I'd like to say we are currently in advanced talks <laughs> <laughs> about making this happen. <laughs> On a serious note, we are actually in advanced talks. I can And that. when this happens, this isn't for us. This is for you. Yes. 
This yes. is for the fans of TNC that have continually stood by Dennis Shrebeni, continually yes. stood by his fantastic substitute appearances. Could you, by the way, <laughs> can you just imagine, by the way, me and you rocking up to Colney with a meal with our icon? No, it's, a, it's in Delia's restaurant. Oh, Jesus. You, you know, it's not, it's not oh, at the really? Lotus Training Centre. Oh, I've got so much interest yeah. in that. So us two and Big D on a table. Uh, that sounds like a good table to yeah. me. What do you think we're going to talk about? Or should I, we just worry about that when we get there? I think we talk about... Icon caps. We can wear these to the meal. We absolutely have to wear these to the if meal. If you want us to sponsor Dennis Shrebeni, us, us to sponsor, this is a communal effort. Yes. Hit the like button. Hit it. Very hard. Ben Dataria. If Pukid continues to score at this rate in the current market, I genuinely believe he's worth £45 million. Pounds. Wrong. 80 Really? In his current goal scoring form, he's worth 80 million. Right. Stand by it. Tell me I'm wrong. With the current players and what they're going for. No, I Tell love it. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. Facts don't care about feelings. Boom. 80 million. Saluting Shrebeni. By the way, <laughs> saluting Shrebeni. Good to have you back, my what friend. What a time to ask. Some question. say that when he scores, his hand automatically is attracted to his head, and that's why he's never smiled in his life. All we know is he's called Shrebeni. <laughs> Love that. Uh, he asks, how good does Todd Cantwell look? Obviously worked very hard in pre-season. Yeah. He looks very good. He looks um, he looks Tony Andreu versus Hitch in Town good. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that performance, by the way? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Remember when we went to watch him at Goldston? I've, on a serious note, that's the single best. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Seriously. Take my glasses off now. My not see glasses. That's the best performance I've ever seen of any footballer live. Andrea at Goulston. And I've seen Messi live at the new camp. You're saying Andre against Goulston was better? Yeah, 100%. Mm. Good. Uh, no, I think he looks very good. And thanks, he also says loving the hats. Haven't seen them yet, Thank but no worries. Angus Gibson asks... Hello, Angus. Ideal centre-back pairing. Assuming everyone's fit. Yeah. Zim... So Zim and comes ben. straight back in. Zim and Ben, 100%. Hanley's dropped harsh after a win against Newcastle. No, Zim then. Close? Look, who does the biggest bench press at this football club? Zim. 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 So we're basing in. Premier League selections off how much you can bench press? Yes, we are. Okay. Christoph Zimmerman is straight in the mix again. On a serious note, on a footballing note. Especially coming straight back from injury. Yeah, I suppose honestly, that's not really the question. Zimmerman but. brings just so much confidence. And I think, straight, and all joking apart, strength is the best part of Christoph Zimmerman's game. Mm. No one is going to outmuscle Christoph mm. Zimmerman. I still think Tim Close has got a mistake in him. I love watching Timmy K, by the way. Love him. Mm. Um, but yeah, Christoph Zimmerman for me, straight in the mix. Amazing. Now, this is the question that everyone's been asking. Amy asks score prediction and starting 11 for the Chelsea game. Of course, Chelsea in the next game at Carroll Road. Tough. I think it. it, it I'm is. worried for Chelsea. Hang on, what? You literally said to me at the final whistle, we're easily beating Chelsea 4 5 That's what I, No, I said I'm worried. Oh, for Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh, you're. As in, if I'm Chelsea, Chelsea, I'm worried. Oh, 100%. If I'm a Chelsea fan, I'm brooking it big mm. time. Seriously. I think that we will cause them massive, massive problems. Sorry, what's funny? <laughs> no, 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 nothing at all. We'll, we'll cause them massive, massive problems. I agree. I think Norwich fans should be confident. I think this could be our first giant killing of the season. Right. Seriously. Yeah. So yeah. starting 11, Tim Crawley in goal. Yeah. Max Aaron's at right back. Yeah. Ben Godfrey. Yeah. Next to Close if he's fit. Or Hanley staying in there. Is Close going to be back sooner than Christoph Zimmerman? Yes. Yeah. Tim Close for me. Jamal Lewis. Yeah. Morris Leitner. Yes. Tom Tribal. Yes. Emmy Buendia. Yeah. Todd Cantwell. 100%. Patrick Roberts. Hang on, what? Where's Pookie? Oh, I'm getting to Pookie. Oh, okay. Patrick Roberts? Patrick Roberts. Over Steeperman. Oh, he's harsh on Steeps. I would start with Steeps. Okay. I would start with Steeps. Because but, he... I would, but I would not hesitate to put Patrick Roberts on on the 60, 70 minute mark if Marco wasn't delivering. Because you, I think you, you famously said um, in a few podcasts ago that Patrick Roberts stinks of someone to come off the bench and score a banger. Believe me, his first goal will be a banger. Well, it was at Luton. Yeah, but in the league. Okay. He's already delivered. Will it come at season. Chelsea? I think it could. And then, of course, Big Jojo up front. Jojo. <laughs> you know, disappointing not to see Big Jojo today. He's injured as well, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, they're all crippled, aren't they? Yeah. Nightmare. Pookie up front, of course. 
Yes. Thanks for the question, Amy. Uh, Co-production Norfolk just simply sends us love hearts. You know what? I'm going to thank so much to Co-production Norfolk because I've noticed that they have been retweeting and liking everything under the sun on all social media platforms. Me and Jack really appreciate the support. You could say we are co-producing content. Ben Allen asks... That was awful, by the way. <laughs> ben Allen asks, does everyone writing us off annoy you? I know it shouldn't, no. because only us lot know how good we are, but I can't take the pure ignorance anymore. <laughs> this is Ben Allen. This is, Ben's uh, livid. Yeah, he's fuming. He looks like he's... He you, wouldn't looks... Want to, you would not want to mess with Ben Allen. I wouldn't want to meet Ben Allen. Wow. Big Ben. <laughs> Down a dark alleyway. No. <laughs> Big Ben. Big Ben in his picture has got his... He's got his Peroni in hand, oh, God. his arms around his pals, oh, and he is not messing about. <laughs> anyway, Ben Allen's fury. Wow. You want Ben <laughs> Allen on your side. Anyway, what's the tweet? <laughs> he, what's can't, the tweet? he can't take the ignorance from pundits anymore. Right, you know what? I agree. I understand why he's He can't angry. take it. Do you know what I loved? Just now, jumping onto Talk Sport and telling Adrian Durham, mm. it was a bit of a dig, because I said, you neutrals, mm. you neutrals. <laughs> haven't backed us and yeah. you wrote us off you've called us naive and you know what let it fuel our fire let it fuel our fire let it be the Norwich power this season mm. that people will write us off right yeah I don't know about you but that to me is just petrol and yeah. I want more of the petrol because the more petrol I've got the bigger the flame is going to be 100%, 100%. <laughs> and, then, and then all it takes is Ian Abrams to chuck the match in the fire goes up <laughs> Ian Abrams who by the way doesn't have a clue Anyway, have a clue. Ben Allen, I agree. And you know what, Ben Allen? Question of the week. Nah, that's a big statement, but I love it. There's a picture of him with Danny Dyer. Oh, I love that. Ben Allen. My man. Yeah, I back Ben. Uh, Hitman at 683, who's a Besiktas fan, asks, How what, many what? <laughs> Hit, Hitman and... Wow, okay. Hitman683, he's a Besiktas supporter, okay. leftist and gamer. Okay. What a fantastic mix. No, I love that. He asks, it's... how many goals will Pookie score this season? My guess is 18. Jeez. Uh, would you take 18, first and foremost? I think he'd be disappointed with that. Wow. Really? Well, look, he's, he's going at two a game at the moment. If, it, if that drops to one a game... <laughs> i tell you what, though. 20. If Pookie hits 20, we survive. Point oh, yeah. Bank, we survive. I would take 18 right now. I think it started well, but we are... We are going to play some better teams right. than Newcastle this season. He scored against Liverpool. Some European more resolute defence. Absolutely, 100%. I just, I don't want to write him off, but yeah. 18, I'll take it. Oh, I'd take 18. 20 well. doable. 25? Optimistic. Dare to dream, right? Uh, Newcastle fan Jack asks, um, oh, what's, sorry, Jack. what's wrong with us from your view? Players don't deserve the fans. You know what, and, and, and I'm going to be serious for a moment here. Yeah. I, I know a lot of Newcastle fans, and I, and I love Newcastle as a club. I love it as a city. It's a fantastic place. Always loves going up to Newcastle for away games. I remember very vividly going up on a Sunday on Club Cabbage, losing 6-2. Mbok. Mbok scoring a couple. Um, I think it's an absolute disgrace the way that their fans are treated and, yep. and, and the way they've been pulled through the ringer by, by Mike Ashley. Yeah. He clearly doesn't want to be there. It's it's simply another business on his portfolio. He's a shrewd yeah. businessman. But Just he's... bought Jack Wills, by the way. So I'm throwing out all of my Jack Wills. He's a 30 goal a season striker, right? Jack Wills yeah, or Jack. Mike Ashley? <laughs> Jack Wills. Sounds oh, like a person. Sorry, I didn't really get the joke. Okay. On a serious note, I'm with you, Jack. I think it's a. I think it's an absolute disgrace. I think it's a shambles. This is a big club. Oh, mate, it's a, it's a ginormous club. Mm. You know, they're a huge club and... I really respect clubs that have got a tremendous history, such as Newcastle United. I'd be so frustrated. I mean, I know how we'd be feeling, me and you, if, you know, we just had... Look, Rafa Benitez, mm. for me... One of Europe's best managers. Definitely. Is he in the top 10 in Europe? Yes. Yes, he is. And Newcastle was so lucky to have him. What are you doing? Mm. I, don't, I think Ashley has got something wrong with him. I feel sorry for him. I think he must have something wrong with him. Well, he, he's, he's merely using Newcastle. He, he doesn't want to be losing too much money. He doesn't want to be spending... Although, to be fair, they've spent big money on... on what's his name? Joe Laton. And... Uh, what's, by the way, that, the other... that doesn't look like a shrewd investment. No. He, he, look, and look, this... 
we are the flip side of Newcastle. We're making very wise decisions in, in the in the recruitment. Yeah. We've got good owners. Yeah. Granted, not much money, but yeah. solid. I just And we're a self sustaining club. The thing for me that would make it more annoying for me as a Newcastle fan is you look like you look at a club such as Aston Villa. Right. Um, another big they, club uh, yeah yeah, another big club probably on maybe a little bit bigger than Newcastle don't know maybe in the wow. same size I don't know well, in terms of trophies yeah, yeah. might be wrong we'll have, we'll have more might be horrifically wrong actually but it would frustrate me being a Newcastle fan thinking hang on a minute we've got a huge stadium an extremely passionate supporter base mm. a worldwide supporter base we've, we've won trophies we've been successful in the past we've got a tremendous history you know a lot of people support Newcastle United why has someone not come along and bumped Mike Ashley off the tree? But then would it be a good thing? Because are you just going to get someone else that doesn't care about the club? And anyway, let's flip this back to Norwich City Football Club. This is exactly why we should be so grateful that we've got a fan that loves the club dearly. Mm. And you, we knew that when we, when we, let's drop it in. When we went for, to the press dinner, Humble pre-season, <laughs> and we spoke to Delia. Yeah, she loves it. Delia bleeds Norwich City, literally. Delia and Michael Wynne Jones cannot love this club anymore. Mike Ashley wouldn't be, he doesn't love Newcastle. No. He just sits there in his in his With shirt. His in, his shirt cup. That, in his shirt that doesn't fit him. His sports direct coffee cup that's four times the size of a normal coffee cup. A normal coffee cup. Anyway. Don't By get the way, that, 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 that meal we had, it was a lovely main dish, wasn't it? The, it was, I, I didn't was expect it sea fish. Bass? Yeah, yeah sea fish. Bass. Rate that. Really rate that. Yeah. What's your go-to fish dish? Um, salmon on croute. Really? Yeah. I love a swordfish. Wow. Honestly, if I'm away, if I'm abroad, Portugal, Spain, France, if I see swordfish on the menu... I'm going for it. Yeah, I'm more of a I'm more of a, like a shellfish person. Are you really? So you know, garlic prawns. Garlic prawns. Hello, girls. Yeah, my favorite my favorite ever meal is I'm going to I'm going to the Columbia, which is in Yarmouth. It's a fantastic Mediterranean I thought you, restaurant. I thought you just said I'm going to Columbia. No, 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 and no. I was like, wow. no. It's the Columbia restaurant. Uh, fillet steak with um, garlic prawns, with some garlic bread on the side, uh, asparagus. Asparagus, right there. Uh, chips, Lovely onion rings, uh, deep fried mushrooms. Asparagus, disgustingly <laughs> un- underrated veg. Hugely underrated. You know what my favourite multi-purchase deal is in Tesco? I think we might be losing the viewers. tender now. stem broccoli with asparagus. Two, it's, it's three Tender pounds. stem broccoli. You know what? If I could put you with a veg, <laughs> you reek of a tender stem. You Do reek I? of a tender stem. Who's eating normal broccoli? Do you know what I really love as well? Honey roasted parsnips. Mm, All over talking. that. Mm. When grandma serves me my, my, my honey roasted parsnips. Mm. Yeah, grandma, big up grandma, by yeah, the way. Like a postman. Always She's delivering. getting on. Yeah, she always delivers. First class, some may say. Yeah. Uh, finally, and, and I'm going to end it here, Sonia uh, just simply says, awesome, so classy. Don't know what she's referring to, maybe us. It could be uh, anyone. It could be anyone or anything. I mean, And it would be appropriate right now in the Norwich City sphere, wouldn't it? I mean, Sonia, by the way, by the way, Sonia... From Lowestoft, yep. campaigner for the Waveney, for Yarmouth. the Waveney Labour branch, uh, parliamentary candidate, supply teacher, uh, government Pakefield supply teacher. Rate that. Uh, Giving back to the community. This is this is a woman with with with, with stature, saying awesome, so classy. No, I love that. So it's not just any Tom, Dick, and Harry. It's no, Sonia. It's Sonia. Big Sonia. Big Son. <laughs> love that. Anyway, Chris, um, let me ask you a question. Genuinely now, very seriously, because this whole podcast has been... Yeah. We're, we've no script we're excited, yet again. Right? We're excited. We've probably lost we it. People are probably Don't listen to anything now. we've said. Going now into the rest of the season... God, I'm confident. Make it... <laughs> <laughs> right, right, anyway. But I know it's an early thing to say. Are we staying yes. up? Yes. I can't see us going down. The only way I can see us is up. We're currently in 10th. Why not top six? <laughs> I'm joking. No, not top six. Maybe like top eight. Could you imagine if we got to Europe? And you know what as well? I, can, I fancy a cup run this season. Do you? I don't. Okay, that's fine. We won't have one. I just, for me, I just I, we need, no, we I need no, to no. stay in the Premier League. Are we going to stay up? Yes. yes. Is it going to be a scrap? Yes. You think it's going to be a scrap? Yeah, of course it will be. There's, there's, there's a scrap. It's good teams in this division. Okay. There's good teams in 
For me, Newcastle, yeah. uh, watched them last week against Arsenal, very poor. This week, very poor. Yeah. They're probably one of the worst teams in the Premier League. Yeah. But you know what? Actually, we were comfortable. So, no, it's not going to be a scrap. We're going we're gonna to have 40 points by, I don't know, November. Is that possible? Wow. That's a huge statement. No, we're not. Okay. We'll stay up, though. I love that. No, I love that from you. I just want to say to everyone, are we finishing up now? By the yeah, way? yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up our closing link, as you would say. I just want to say to everyone listening on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on, where else can they listen? Stitcher. Stitcher. Bleach Report Audio in the US. Boom. Big up our US yeah, listeners. Yeah, Bleach Report. And if you're watching on YouTube, I honestly just want to say thank you so much to everyone that supported me and Jack on the channel since mm. they dot. I don't know about you, Jack, but this Premier League season, it, it, it feels like a, a bit of a watershed yeah. moment in terms of the channel and mm. where it can go. The guests that we've got lined up are huge. Um, for the podcast, certainly. We've got bigger competitions than ever before. So We're on the verge socials. of sponsoring Dennis Shrabeni. Could you imagine? We started from the bottom and now we're sponsoring Dennis Shrabeni. Started from the bottom and now we're sponsoring Dennis Shrabeni. Yeah. Love that. That's cool. How are we finishing it? With reference to Dennis? Uh, no. Cheers to uh, cheers to Timu, the first player yes. to score a Premier, uh, Premier League hat trick since Efana Kuku for Norwich City in 1993, in, which was the year I was born. Wow! And you know what? Why can't he score another one next week? Why can't he? On a serious note, why can't he? Well, no, he, he will. What's the what's the, you, you probably know this in terms of oh, speaking things saying. into existence? Yeah, self talk is really important. Timu Puki will score a hat trick next week against Timu Puki will score a hat trick next game against Chelsea that's mind, That's mindfulness right OTBC Chris good to see you mate top man uh, Peace thanks for the icon caps Elliot I hope you enjoyed your holiday mate and uh, we don't agree with fakes we do with these see you later <laughs>